Good morning, my name is Leslie Williams, and I'm in San Diego, California, and uh, sorry for looking away, but I was trying to find my cell phone. Uh, I'm going to be turning it on in order to show you what today's date is. Uh, now, at the beginning of this video, I'm going to be making some statements that aren't going to make sense to you until after I just start describing why they're stated. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I want to make sure that I remember to make these particular statements concerning the events that I'm going to be describing. I noticed that the individual who approached me at SDSU, yesterday I was at SDSU, I, and I went uh, to um, go down to the media center like I've done on many, 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 many occasions to watch a movie. In fact, it was a movie that I bought. And uh, I stated in my digital tape recorder that I have running at all times, attached to my bra, okay, like this. This is where the recording part is, right here on the top. It's attached to my bra covered up on my shirts and it's running at all times on full powered batteries. Now before I walked into the media center and before I got to SDSU I said let's see if anything happens here today. And then when I um, went into the uh, I went to the media center because yesterday was payday so I, I got to SDSU late. I was tired from running around all day uh, and so when I got to SDSU I was just going to watch the movie that I bought Terminator Salvation. It was a movie I bought at, at, at Ralph's for $9. So I went in there to watch the movie. I told them I checked out some headphones and remotes, like I always do, except usually I usually check out a movie too. And then I went and got, uh, got, the, uh, I, I got the remotes and the headphones, and I went and sat down to watch my movie. And as soon as I sat down, a guy approached me. And I sensed him being behind me, so I turned, and he was literally standing one foot behind me. And I said, can I help you? And he says, I was wondering if I could check your bags to see if there are any guns in there. This is the bag here. Okay. This is just my, my, my little itty bitty duffel bag that I carry with me on a daily basis. This is my lunch right here. This is the movie I was telling you about right here that I bought. These are my headphones. And this is a bag full of proof in reference to particular different items of paperwork. It's paperwork is what it is. And some of the paperwork holds proof. And this is all that I carry with me every day. And sometimes my, one of my coats will be in there because sometimes it gets cold out. Lately it's been cold out in San Diego, like 50 degrees. And I, I look at him like, what? And I go, who are you? And, he's, and he goes, do you mind if I search your bag? And I said, are you, an, I, I, I go, are you campus safety? I go, I think I might even said, are you an SDSU employee? But I don't remember. I haven't listened to the audio file yet because this just happened last night. And I said, no, I go, if you're not campus safety, I, I go, and I go, what are you talking about anyways? I go, he goes, he goes, well, I have, I have reason to believe that you might be carrying some weapons on you. I said, what are you talking about? I go, if you're not SDSU campus, can you please leave me alone? And he kept standing there. And I said, look, if you don't leave me alone, I'm going to call security. He goes, well, if you don't let me search your bag along these lines, I'm going to call security. And I said, well, do you want to use my phone to do it? Ah, ah. And so he, he finally, I told him to get, I go, I go, man, I go, look, get the hell out of here. Leave me alone. I, I wasn't being disruptive. I just said, leave me alone. He wouldn't leave me alone. He kept standing right behind me one foot, even after I told him, no, he couldn't search my bag. And um, so we left. And uh, so then I attempted to start to watch this brand new movie. I literally opened it up at the, at the uh, carousel in the media room, the little booth where the VCRs are. I literally opened it, went, opened it up for the very first time to put it the DVD in, into the v, DVD player. And I even made a statement, because this has happened to me before. You're never going to believe this. I made a statement in my digital tape recorder as I was walking in the media room. Let's see if this uh, DVD uh, that, I just, that I'm, I'm going to watch won't work. And it wouldn't. Yeah. Now, I'm, 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 I, I know you're going to think to yourself, now how in the heck is that possible? I'm not going to state how it's possible in this particular video. The only thing I ask, fellow, please, fellow viewers, that if you trust me, if you've seen any of my videos, I have undisputable proof I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a target of this crime. Undisputable. I have over 400 audio files of gang stalking being set around me at different locations, including SDSU, including by staff. Yes. Uh, it, uh, getting them getting around me and saying gang stalking around me is a method called direct conversation in organized gang stalking expeditions and they literally have been having the audacity to get around me and saying gang stalking around me 
in order to associate the fact in my mind that this crime is happening towards me. It's a clever way to make a person feel stalked by getting around them and repeating certain words or phrases that they have within the conversations they're having with each other or while they're on their cell phone. They'll, they'll repeat the certain words constantly. And what they've been doing is literally getting around me and literally seeing gang stalking. Now, I got videos online and some blogs online. But 98% of them, 98% of them are titled Learning Disabled Woman. Eh, being gang stalked. I've never introduced myself to one person at SDSU ever. Ever. Or UCSD or USD or any business I've ever went to. The only people that know me by name are the San Diego police, some doctors and hospitals that I've had to tell my name after being assaulted by them. Go to YouTube and type in Learning Disabled Woman Brutally Assaulted on MTS Bus. And then look in the description of that YouTube video thoroughly. There's a blog in there. Yeah, there's a blog URL address in there that's got a, a PDF link attached in it. It shows I predicted that assault 11 days before it occurred. But I'm getting off, off the subject here concerning what happened at SDSU. At SDSU. I have, anyways, I'm going to just actually uh, get back to the, uh, how gang stalking is being said around me just for a second. I'll be at a specific location like this one right here. Before I leave, okay, this location, I'll get out my cell phone and I'll show a video picture of my cell phone which shows the time and the date. Then I'll say, let's see if I hear gang stalking along my routes today. And I'll even mention where I'm going. Most of the time I'll mention where I'm going, whether it be a store, a business, or SDSU, or whatever, a public library, or whatever. And I'll say, let's see if I hear gang stalking being set around me when I get to these locations or on route to getting there. And then it's caught at least on this digital tape recorder, okay? I literally have over 400 audio files right now. 400 of it being set around me multiple times just in one location, okay? And including SDSU, either staff and students, okay? Now, if all my videos and blogs are titled Learning Disabled Woman, yeah, and I'm exposing I'm being gang stalked on campus and everywhere I go, then what's the likelihood of gang stalking being set around me? Do you understand what I'm saying? No one knows me by name, so why is that that description of the crime that's happening towards me being said around me? Gang stalking is not a common word at all. I'm going to get back to what happened at SDSU. So he locked. And then when I realized that this DVD wasn't working, which in time I will explain how that was literally, how, how the probability of that being caused by a third party I have undisputable proof that that can be caused by a third party, but I'm not going to mention it in this particular video. But once I do disclose it, you'll be able to witness the facts, the factual little realities that they have the technology to infiltrate electronic devices to alter their functions so they do not operate correctly. I'm not going to go there right now in this video, though. But once I do prove it, you'll be able to see that what I just described are factual realities, 100% truth, concerning patented technologies that are a resource of gang stalking expeditions. Now, he left, and since the DVD wouldn't work, I thought, well, maybe it might be just this one particular DVD player. So I got up and moved to another one. And then uh, uh, it wouldn't work, so I got up and I checked out a movie. I forgot the name of the movie, but I think I got the, I got the receipt, I think, not unless they stole it, uh, because the SDSU campus safety arrived on the scene. So I rented a movie, sat down, put that movie in, and then I started a new digital audio file because him harassing me was caught on a, this digital tape recorder because, like I said, I got it running at all times. And when I, when I, when I figured it was just the guy that was threatening to, to call SDSU Campus Safety, I figured it was just done for fear-mongering, I thought to myself, well, just in case nothing does happen, I'm going to stop that particular digital running audio file and start a new one. Just in case nothing did happen, I could keep the one that he harassed me on. I could keep it without having to keep another two additional hours on it with nothing happening. In other words, I didn't want to waste audio time. Okay? And so within about two minutes of me sitting at the new carousel, the new booth that I got up to go to, uh, they came. Now check this out. When they came, he reappeared on the scene. Okay? Now he walked around as I was talking to campus safety. He walked around and went behind the media center checkout booth where the employees were. And I saw him bending over doing something, okay, which means he's an employee. But check this out. When he left, 
And when I went in to go get up to check out a movie, once I discovered that this DVD wasn't going to be working, I went up and, and got up and went back to the media counter to check out a movie. Uh, I, they asked me who this guy was. He goes, she, they go, what was happening with you? I go, I, go, I don't know. Some guy was, was uh, accusing me of being suspicious and uh, threatening to call campus safety. And they go, well, who was he? I go, I don't know. He goes, well, they go, well, that's weird. So they were acting like they didn't know who he was. That's caught on digital audio file as well. So then when they came, when he came back with campus safety, he walked behind their booth, their counter, where they sit at their computers to check out movies for patrons and students that come in. And when he went behind their counter, he bent over and got something. Yeah. See, it's a booth that they sit behind. And then they got, they got computers that are on the desk of the booth, okay? And then they sit in their chair in front of the computer. He, he bent down and reached for something that was within the booth on the other side of it, okay? He was an employee. And I know I've seen him in there before. So check this out. They basically did nothing but use an excuse to call campus safety. Now I'm going to continue these statements concerning the arrest and the brutal assault I experienced by campus safety. Yes. Mm-hmm. As a result of me having uh, conversations with them, it led to an arrest. And the information concerning the excuse of why they arrested me? Yeah. And the probable cause of arresting me because they said I wouldn't give them my social security number? Yes was based on a total fabricated lie that I've already caught them in. Yes. And, uh, all right, so, uh, for, I'm banned from the library supposedly for a week, and we're going to see if that's a lie to try and get me to come back so they can arrest me again for trespassing. All right, so look in the description of this YouTube video. I got bruises on my arms. I think I got one on my back. Look in the description of this YouTube video because I'm keeping my videos short right now because uh, uh, I'm only allowed to use a computer for two hours at SCSU and one hour at public libraries. So when I take my video card out of this camera I'm shaking right now, if it's a long video, they don't allow me to upload it within that short time period that I'm allowed to use the computers on. So look in the description of this YouTube video for statements concerning what literally happened between me and campus safety. I was literally brutally arrested. Brutally arrested, I got bruises on my body and given a citation to go to court. Listen, for doing absolutely nothing. Alright, thank you.